Welcome back to the wizard shop and it's one last hurrah for my daughter's Prius. This video is going to be about when is it time to get rid of a car and also when is it time that maybe it's for you to buy a car like this. Let's get started. So yes, this Prius has already been sold. But we're going to take a look at it. There's been a few changes since the last time you guys saw it. We'll do a look over and we'll talk about what I just mentioned. This is a 2008 Toyota Prius and it has 230,000 miles on it. It's on its original batteries and they're still going strong. Really there's nothing really wrong with the car. It's just got a lot of miles and it's starting to use a little bit of oil in between oil changes. So my daughter which is not the one that crashed my Prelude. This is a different daughter. Voiced her concern that she's not interested in keeping an eye on the oil. She doesn't want to keep doing that. She doesn't want to drive a car like that. And there's been a few mishaps with this car and she was ready for another one. And we got her the blue RAV4 that you guys seen in a couple videos back, a few videos back. This one has been sitting for a while and I thought it was time that it needs to move on. Let's take a look around it, inside of it, and let's put it on the lift. So you guys, the first thing that we notice here is the hood is a little bit different in color. And I'll bring the camera up in just a second. You'll be able to see it. But I get to tell this part of the story because I was the one that heard it first. Yeah. Yeah, we were on our way back from church camp. She's driving this. I'm driving the truck, towing our vintage camper. And I get a frantic phone call. Mom, Mom, and she's crying. Somebody's hit the car. And I'm like, what? What happened? She's like, I was waiting at the gas station. I needed to get gas. And just like all of us, she's just kind of playing on her phone, waiting for the pump to get open. All of a sudden, boom. And the person had to back up in front of her and didn't notice it. And I think a lot of us, it could have happened to you. You're just kind of zoning out. Anyway, the guy had a trailer and squished the front of her car. It was sad. She was in tears. It was her first accident, and it wasn't even her fault. But luckily, being the wizard here, he was able to fix it. Yep, so I did find a hood, and it said online it was the matching paint code and the co correct color red. But when it arrived, as you can see, it's not. But it's an old car. Uh, this is not going to be concourse quality. It's not going to be a show car. So I really didn't care about that as long as it ran and drove and it was safe. And she didn't care either. She was like, it doesn't look wrecked. And you know, for most kids, it looks close enough for her. But let's go ahead and look around the rest of the car. Yep. So as we just mentioned, the hood has been replaced with one that doesn't match. The headlights are discolored, faded. I'm not really going to mess with that. But one thing, since we live out in the country, that she kept having issues with, as you can see, this grill is missing. It's all, well, actually it's not missing. It's just broken and any kind of roadkill or anything that was on the road, she kept hitting it. She would run to it constantly. And this thing is just too low for her. It didn't cause any damage where she couldn't drive the car, but it got very old for her. And so that's why she has a RAV4 now. It has more ground clearance and that hasn't been a concern now. There's nothing under here damaged that's going to cause any issue with the engine running. It just doesn't look very pretty. So that's the front. Work our way down to the side. It's got fairly new tires on it. The wheels are in good shape. This front left corner area is not dented or beat up. It's in decent shape. There's no broken glass. Move back here to the left rear of the car. Same story, no rust, no dents, no broken glass. It's in decent shape. The spoiler here has faded paint, but the rest of the rear of the car is in good shape. Again, no dents, no rust, no damage. And then we're at the right rear corner of the car. There's a few little hail dents or some sort of a dents down here. But other than that, it's in pretty decent shape. Then we go to the front right and the metal is in good shape. It's not rusted out, but you can see where She's hit things and knocked the bumper loose a little bit. It's not coming off. It's just got some areas where it's not tight against the car. You can see the crease here where the trailer that Mrs. Wizard talked about, it creased the bumper there. The fog lights are broken, or one of them's broken, but it still works. It still lights up. So being that I'm getting rid of the car, I'm not going to mess with it. So the interior is in decent shape. It's not damaged, but it's... A, it is a little dingy and dirty and the carpets are a little dingy just from having a teenager owning the car and driving it for a while. 
but it's not really giving her any serious trouble or anything, so it's been a good car for her. The seats are in decent shape, the headliner's good, the carpets are really dingy, but otherwise, not too bad. Definitely a usable car. So let's go ahead and get the hood open and take a look under there. So here we have the 1.5 liter four cylinder hybrid synergy drive system. It is a hybrid, as you guys know, it's a Prius. It hasn't, like I said, it hasn't given her any serious trouble. It is starting to use a little oil. In between its oil changes, there might be a half a quart and possibly a quart gone, just depending on how she drove it. But we'll keep an eye on it. It doesn't smoke. It runs fine, so other than that, it hasn't had any serious issues. It just goes and goes and goes. There's a little bit of slime here or a little bit of seepage that's actually not a leak. That's just where my daughter filled it when she kept the oil topped up and she would occasionally spill some. As you've seen on Hoobie's Garage, when he's mentioned any time about a Prius or anything, they're actually very, very good cars. A lot of people equate high miles and hybrid as a no-win situation, run as fast as you can. And maybe in some makes and models of cars that would be true, but on the Prius, they have proven themselves time and time again. Original batteries lasting clear past 200,000 miles and still got good, decent charge on them. The engine's not giving a whole bunch of trouble. It's a Toyota. It just keeps going. This one has 230,000 miles on it. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes another 50 before it needs batteries. Now the person who's buying this Toyota is my friend Leo. You guys have seen a couple of his cars in the shop in the videos. You've seen his Prelude. It's silver in color. You've also seen his 2003 Lamborghini Murcielago. It's also silver in color. He also has an 82 Corvette with the Crossfire injection. It's in really pretty good shape. He's getting ready to get stationed in Northwest for six months of training. He's a military person. He doesn't want to take his nice cars up there in the snow and salt and tear them up. He said, Car Wizard, I'm looking for a cheap car, and I've been looking for the $1,500, $2,000 range, and all I find is garbage. The engines are knocking. The power steering doesn't work. They're leaking all over the place. It's been in a wreck. He said, I'm, done. I'm not having any luck in that price range. I don't want to spend a lot of money. And I knew in the back of my mind that this car has been sitting for a couple of weeks. My daughter's not going to drive it. I'm not going to drive it. We've gotten our use out of it. I figured we could pass it on for the price range that he was looking at. So this is a time to think about as a, a car owner, when is it time to get rid of a car? Number one, when you don't drive it anymore, you don't have any driving use for the car. Number two, when the cosmetic appearance or some of the maintenance and things on it are to a level that you really don't want to fool with it anymore. It's still a usable car, it just takes a little bit more effort and you don't want to put out that effort, that's number two. And number three, it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. Your family has grown. It's too small. You need a truck, something like that. And this is not fitting the bill anymore. It's also a good time to get rid of a car. Now the other question is, when is it time to buy a car that is in this condition? It's a little rough, but it still runs and drives. And in just like in Leo's case, he doesn't want to take his nice cars up there. He doesn't really care what it looks like too much, as long as it runs and drives and does the job. An extra little bit of maintenance, keeping an eye on the oil level, he doesn't care about that. It's easy. That's when it's time to buy a car like this. You're going to be getting an out-of-state job or a job that you're going to be on construction sites and you don't want to beat up a nice car. You find something in the price range like this, if it gets scratched, if it gets dented, something bad happens to it. It's not a huge loss. You don't buy a car like this to wax it and shine it and have it polished and look pretty. This is not what these cars are for. It's to serve a purpose to get you to point A to point B for a certain time frame. Will this car last another 10 years? No, probably not. It does have a lifespan and it is at the probably the last 10 to 15 percent of its lifespan. Maybe 20 if you push it. For the price that he's going to spend, he can get that last bit of it and it served his purpose and he's done with it. He doesn't even need the car anymore. So that's a situation that these cars fall into. 
Let's go ahead and get it on the lift. So I just made a mistake that a lot of mechanics make when doing an oil change in one of these. The ignition is on. It's in neutral right now. I can hear the humming of the engine. You go to change the oil. You drain the oil. And then you walk off to go look for an oil filter. And the engine starts because it wants to charge the batteries. And you're scrambling. You're running because the thing's now running with no oil in it. Make sure when you have a Prius in for service, or if you're doing your own service, the ignition is off and the key is out of the car and in your pocket. This engine could turn on at any moment the way I have it set up. And you just, you're not thinking, you want to get the oil change done and the, the ignition is on. Be very careful with that of these cars. That's not a problem here. If it starts, I don't care. It's, got, it's full of oil. It's happy. So let's go ahead and take a look. So there's no leaks from the radiator, which is right up in here. Nice and happy. Had a recent oil change, new filter, did that. One thing I'm liking is with 230,000 miles, just minor seepage. And there is some minor seepage here. And that is really good. Toyota comes through like this over and over and over again. Take a look at the wheels and brakes. Brakes are about half gone, but still got some life left in them. CV shaft is good. Sway bar link is good. Go to this side. Brakes are half gone. Nothing loose there. CV shaft is good. Sway bar link is good. Let's look from the back side up here. You can see some valve cover leakage. It's either where some has been spilled or it could be the valve cover is leaking a tiny bit, but it's not bad. You don't have to worry about power steering leak on these because the power steering is full electric. The exhaust is in good shape. There's a little seepage here where I think that, again, the oil has been filled and it's been spilled and spilled all over the place, but it's not that big of a deal. Here's the exhaust catalytic converter and whatnot, and a tiny little exhaust out the back. It's a cute little thing. Now we work our way to the back. It has a solid beam rear axle. That's cheap and effective for manufacturing, but still rides okay. The rear shocks are good. It's got drum brakes in the rear. Nothing loose there. Nothing loose there. The shock is good. Looks like the right height sensor deal is broken. It probably won't mess with that too much. It's probably been broken for a long time. And everything else looks okay. Like I said, the tires are in good shape. They're fairly new. So. Let's go ahead and get this thing on the ground. So there you have it. We've checked this car over and we did find a few issues. But being this car is nearing the end of its life, it's had some cosmetic issues, it's been in a couple small accidents. These are not a car that you buy and try to fix everything like new. This is the wrong car to do that on. This is a car that you buy that's running and driving and you just drive it until you're done with it or something major goes wrong that's not worth fixing and you move on. Now the batteries on this, this has become common enough and a large enough issue that when batteries go dead, there are people out there now that will pull the pack which is behind the rear seat and they will condition it or get any bad cells out of there and kind of rebuild the, the power pack. It could be anywhere from 500 to a grand, somewhere in there, and you can have a good battery pack for that much longer, for quite a while longer. If the engine and transmission and all the things inside there are still working fine, 
it might be worth it to spend the five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars to add another three, four, five years to your car. That's something the the new owner, Leo, has talked about that if the batteries go bad on him, he may actually just pay to get them rebuilt or redone because it's cheaper than buying another car. So the small accidents this car has had were not structural. They didn't damage it to where the alignment is now off. It didn't cause any issues with the cooling system or, or anything to make the vehicle unsafe. They're just small cosmetic issues and you can fix those and be back on the road. It just wasn't very good for the raccoon and the possum that she hit. Right. It, it probably didn't end very well for them, I imagine. I, I don't think so. As we're getting rid of this car, you won't see it anymore. It'll be gone. Leo will be driving it. But I thought we'd get one last video out of it for you guys to answer a couple of questions. When is it time to get rid of a car? And when is it time to look for a car that's like this? So thanks for following along. And if you're curious what kind of tools to use in the shop to work on cars like this, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I recommend you do that now. We got many more cool videos to come. You don't want to miss these videos. These are going to be great. Thanks for watching.